Here I am in the Studio One project page and I'm mastering the first of these four songs I've got loaded up here. And I happen to be using this plugin, the T-Rax One plugin from IK Multimedia, one of my favorite plugins for mastering. And I want you to keep an eye on what happens as I play the closing section of this song. It kind of goes from one section into another. In particular, keep an eye on this knob here and where my mouse is, which is going to be over here. <laughs> Now, of course, you saw that width knob move there, and hopefully if you had a good pair of headphones or studio monitors, you would have heard that track getting wider in terms of the stereo image there. But my mouse was over here the whole time. I was not moving it with my mouse, and that's because I was using automation on the project page here to change this value from within the plugin. It's one of the many uses of automation on the project page in Studio One, and we're going to explore them in this video. Hi, folks. I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Welcome to the second part of this series about the project page. You can see the first part just here in case you missed it. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about automation. Let's start off with the absolute basics. There are two volume faders which can be automated here in the Studio One project page. We have the top one here, which is for the currently selected track. And then we have the bottom one, which is the master fader. Now, just as a quick side note, you can move these faders, of course, using your mouse like so. But if you do have a MIDI surface controller like I do, that can be used within the project page as well. So I can move um, these faders using my MIDI surface controller. I'm not using my mouse here. And as we record, Record automation, you can do that with both methods. Okay, so how do we record automation? In other words, how do we record our movements? Well, at the bottom of each of these faders, you can just see a little menu here, or a button. You can click on that. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the right mode. So we will select right and you'll see it turns red here. This indicates that once we play the track, it is going to record any movements from that fader. So let's do that now. I'm going to do a sort of a very extreme example, which I would never use in this song, but it's just to demonstrate uh, what's actually happening. Now I don't control going all the way down let's go all the way back up the wiggle the wiggle like so okay and i'll stop now in order to actually have those movements played back we need to change this to a read mode so we go down here we click on this again and then we click on read okay now i'll play the track and you'll see i'm not using my mouse or anything and the same same movements will happen again now i don't and you saw the little wiggle at the end there so that is the basis of automation okay that's how you record your movements now you may have noticed when i clicked on this button down here there were some other choices in particular i'm talking about touch and latch there's some different modes they behave a little bit differently i'm going to leave that until the end of the video where i will explain what those two mean there is another type of automation which you could easily confuse with fader volume automation. So I'm going to show you how to do it now and then explain the very important difference. If we go to the first track here and right click, we can then turn on the gain envelope or envelope, however you want to say it. Okay. Now we can, I'll press escape on my keyboard to get rid of this box. Now we can start to draw in some automation for the gain here. I'll do something very, very drastic there. Yeah, we'll have it come back up again again as well and you can see that happening there and if i play this track you will hear the volume drop down and you may think well that's just the same as the volume automation we were doing on the fader before so here's the important difference remember this is gain and it's happening before for the track hits the plugins up here okay now the fader the volume fader is happening after the plugins this is really important because it's going to affect the behavior of the plugins if the the signal going into the plugin for example 
for a compressor is lower, then the compressor is going to behave differently or a saturation plug-in or what have you, okay? So it's a really important distinction to understand before you go ahead and get carried away and just do all of your volume automation down here in the gain envelope. So at the beginning of this video, I was automating a plugin. Let me show you how to do that now. I'm gonna go for the Pro-Q3 plugin here, so I'll just double click on that, and I'm actually gonna automate this low cut that I've got here. Just nice and simple and easy to hear. Now, just like we did with our fader automation, we just need to go into write mode here. So we find that at the top left of the plugin here, you can see it says auto off at the moment. I'll just click on that and go to write mode. Let me play my track and wiggle this around a little bit. That's fine. And of course, we'll just check that. We'll go to read here and we'll play. So with most plugins, you're going to find that you can automate just about anything. So you can get very, very creative with this. Now, just occasionally with some very old plugins, haven't come across them recently, that option will not be available. Some older plugins, you can't actually automate them. Just be aware of that. If you can't find that there for some reason, it may be because of that reason. Now, once you've recorded your automation, you may want to edit it. And you can do that in the bottom part of the screen. Just go down to the bottom and click on this show automation button here. And that's going to reveal these two lanes of automation. The top one here is for the individual songs. And the bottom one is our master automation. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences in the behavior of these two lanes a little bit later on. But first of all, let's get in and make some changes to this volume automation we did here. I'm going to press E on my keyboard just to zoom in a few times so I can more easily see what I'm doing. You can see all of these nodes here. These are the points where it's recorded um, the value of the fader at that particular point. Let me just go in and select one of those. One of the things I can do, of course, is drag it around if I want to, or I could just hit delete on my keyboard to delete it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that for all of these here, just so I get one straight line. Now, when you have a straight line of automation like so, you will see if you hover over it that there's a little circle appears there. If you drag that, then you can get a curved line there, okay? You can see the way it changes behavior as I move it around there. So that's a little bit better, I guess, than having lots and lots of little nodes for the automation. Now, if you right click on that little dot there, you'll get some different options. So I'm gonna change this from an exponential, exponential curve to an S curve. And you can see, if I press escape, you can see that I now have an S curve there, okay? So a little bit different in terms of behavior. Uh, than the type of curve that we had before. And if I right click again, then I can actually straighten that curve and we can go back to a straight curve like so. So that's your basic principles of going in and editing and drawing in some automation there. Now I've done it on volume here, um, but you can just add any automatable, is that a word, components in here, even if you haven't previously recorded them. Just go over to the right here and where it says volume at the moment, just click on that drop down there. Go to add remove. I'm just going to click on that. Now on the, I'll just move that over a little bit. On the right hand side, we can see items that we can add to automation. So I'll just open up this little folder here and you can see my three plugins there. Let's just open up uh, TR. Uh, let's just go, yeah, t tracks one there, and then I'll just automate air, for example. So I'll click on air and then click on this add button. You'll see that move over to here, and you will have seen a line appear just in the background there. I'm just going to change the color of it to a nice red one so we can easily see what we're doing. Close this window, and now I can automate that air control from within that plugin. So I can just go in and I can just draw whatever curves I want to there. Now I'm just gonna zoom back out by pressing W on the keyboard. We can see that we've automated the first song here, and you can see how this line continues into the second song, yeah? And you may be a bit spooked by this. For example, say you were doing, let's go to volume automation, which we'll go back to here. So you did a fade out at the end of your song with that, and it went all the way down to zero. 
you may be thinking, hey, that's affected the next song because this line runs through. In fact, you can even draw nodes in here and re-automate it. But you need to know that it actually is not affecting that second song. When we have a song selected and we're working on this lane, any songs before or after this automation curve do not get affected by it, okay? So don't be worried about that. Now, if you did want to do some automation which affected all the songs, that's when you would use this master lane down here, okay? So if I wanted to do some vo volume automation here and I wanted to take down at this point the volume of the whole EP or album or what have you, I could do that here and it will be affecting all of the songs and that's how you do master automation. <laughs> so previously I mentioned that I would explain a couple of the other write modes that we have for automation. I'm going to be working just with this track fader up here and I've left the automation lane down here open so that you can see what's happening as I move the fader etc. Now the first mode that we're going to look at is the touch mode. So I'll change to touch mode. The first and important thing to understand is if I don't move the fader at all, nothing's going to happen. This is going to be as if it's in read mode. Let's see that happening. Yeah, so just like read mode. But the important thing about touch mode is as soon as I touch the control, so as soon as I put my mouse down or if on my controller indeed I touch it, it's going to start to write data. And then also importantly, as soon as I release the control and stop doing anything with it, it's going to go back to read mode, okay? And it's going to use whatever automation data was there before. Let's just see that in action. So I'm going to let it go in read mode to begin with. Then I'm just going to move the fader a bit and then I'm going to release. Let's see what happens. Moving the fader like so and now releasing. And you saw there that when I released, it continued to go back to read mode, but it did write in the movements I did. Okay, so let's undo that with Control Z and have a look at the other mode. This is latch mode, kind of similar in the sense that uh, if we don't do anything, it will act like it's in read mode. Okay, like so. But as soon as we touch the uh, control and start moving it at all, it's going to go into write mode. But when we release this time, it's going to stay in write mode. So it's going to continue to write values for whatever position we leave the fader in at that point. Let's just see that happening. I'll grab the fader now, do some wiggles up and down, and I'll release it. And you can see it's continued to, continuing to write that sort of low volume which I've left it at there. So that's the way that latch mode works. And importantly, if we open up our plugins and we look at the top left hand side, we can see those different modes also exist there. The next episode is all about preparing your tracks ready for release. And you can find that episode right here if I've made it. If I haven't made it yet, then there'll be some other video right here, which is really, really useful, especially if you're a Studio One user. Go on, click it.